Barbie Genie's Designs. This is what we're making today. This is the Aura Rosa pattern. It's a free pattern, and it's the Shazzy wristlet. Isn't that just the cutest thing? It, I mean, you don't have to do a grommet. Um, I did a grommet with a gate ring, uh, but this is obviously detachable. And then you open it up, and you've got uh, credit card slots. You've got a slip pocket on that side, and on this side you've got a slip pocket, and you have a zipper pocket. And there's plenty of room in there. I mean, it's a it's a really big bracelet, really. But you can hold it just like this and go wherever you need to go. This is um, the lace vinyl from Lauren Marmina. I believe she still has some in stock. She did last time I looked. And then on the inside, I'm just using some uh, quilt cotton from Three Sisters Cranberry, Cranberry's line. Very cute. So this is what we're making today. So thanks for joining. Be sure to click the uh, JD in the bottom right corner to click subscribe, like, and feel free to comment. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Barbie with Genie's Designs, and I'm getting ready to do um, this is actually a free pattern, I believe. I'll verify that, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's this Shazzy wristlet by Aura Rosa Patterns. And it's a great little wristlet. It's got card slots. It's got two slip pockets. It's got an interior zipper pocket. It's got a top zipper pocket. And um, it has a grommet for a wristlet strap. Or you can do a little tab with a D-ring to attach your wristlet strap. I think I'm gonna do the grommets. I have some grommets and I hardly ever get to use them, so I'm gonna do that. So the fabrics I'm gonna use are, I'm gonna use this red lace by uh, Lauren Mormino. I think she actually still has some of this in stock. So those are the two outside pieces. No interfacing. Here's my wristlet strap no interfacing so that's all uh and then i guess uh two zipper tabs and then i did make a, a d-ring tab uh but i plan on using the um grommets and then for my inside pieces i have interfaced all the cotton pieces with woven interfacing out of the seam allowance so this is these are the two um inside main lining panels, woven interfacing, again, out of the seam allowance. This is the, I wrote on the back and then I interfaced them. This is the slip pocket. This is the um, zipper pocket. And this is the card slot back. Yeah, I'm reading it upside down, sorry. All interfaced. And then there is a zipper facing that has no interfacing. I'm gonna do it that way. I thought about doing a zipper overlay, but I decided not to. And then you have a card slot piece. This is just one long piece. She gives you all the measurements to mark it all the way down. And I marked them all on the wrong side, which is, I think, fine, we'll see. <laughs> and then for my um, hardware, I'm using black zipper tape with black nylon. A three in a th number three zipper for the in inside and a number five zipper for the top. So that's that. And then for the here's my black grommets. I have two of those. I have one uh, zipper number five zipper and I have one number three zipper. And then I have a gate ring. To attach my um, wristlet strap. So that's a gate ring. If you've never used them, they're really pretty handy. It, I have to tell you something funny. When I first uh, used my first, uh, my, my neck is still sore, so that's why I'm looking kind of weird. I slept wrong. Um, when I first used the gate ring, I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. I thought, how am I supposed to get this on there? I was pulling, and then finally, I messed with it enough that this went down. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I'm glad nobody was watching because I, I would have been really embarrassed. So, 
The gate rings are very nice and they're not hard to use. So, all right, so let's get started. This is really, as you can see, not very many pieces and it's really a quick so i am going to go over and i'm going to iron my card slots and then i'll come back and explain it um with you so i'll be right back okay so i did my card slots and it's really pretty easy i i marked it all on the back but um i used this marker and i didn't realize it's a leather marker but it evidently disappears when you get it hot. So anyway, I marked my top, which was up here. And then I just did the measurements in the pattern. And that's all there is to it. She gives you very detailed um, directions on where the marking should be. So that's right there. All right, so now all we're gonna do is top stitch along each of those. And this will be interesting because I'm using this, uh, my industrial. Go up a little bit. See how it likes it. It is interfaced, but it's not interfaced on the sides. Yeah, see, it didn't like that. That's funny. It doesn't mind it where it's interfaced. So, let's come up with a plan here, Barb. I think I'll start where the interfacing is, and then I'll backstitch. Just go slow. Yeah. I, I thought about using my Bernina, because this is actually... <clears throat> A pretty, it's a very domestic uh, friendly pattern. Um, so if you have a domestic machine, I, I'd suggest you use it as opposed to your uh, industrial. This will be fine. So I'm just one eight top stitching on each of those credit card tops. One more to go. Mm -hmm. The slower you go, the better it is. Wow. go over and iron this so those are uh, ironed pretty well okay all right so there you have it there's your four yeah I'm gonna go iron these I think they'll iron out where I uh, don't have any interfacing <laughs> it's so funny okay all right, so do that and I'll be right back. All right, so then she tells you to uh, mark in the center uh, a certain distance over, and then we also are gonna trim the sides. So I'm gonna just do my stitching all the way up. And I just wanna make sure they're all even before I stitch. And then I'm going to turn around and come right back down. She didn't tell you to do that in the pattern. Um, but I like to do that. I think it gives those slots a little strength. Mm -hmm. All right, so then she tells you to mark over. Drop something down there. A certain distance and trim oh goodness gracious trim your slots and i'm going to just go do this with the rotary cutter over there so i'll be right back so trim measure from the center over what she tells you to in the pattern and trim each side 
All right, so she also tells you to trim the, the bottom and make sure that the top is straight. And then what the overall piece should be, how wide it should be and how tall it should be. Now we're gonna take our cardstock backing and we're gonna line that up and clip that together. And sew around that, leaving an opening in the bottom to turn that. And we're using what seam allowance? Let me double check that. Her seam allowances are the same unless otherwise noted. And so I'm gonna leave a decent hole here. I'm gonna decrease my stitch length just a little. And you know me, I leave a pretty good turning hole. And then we will trim that and turn it. Trim your corners good. Trim your seams by about half. Don't trim where you, your turning hole because you're going to need to uh, finish that. I'm just trimming these sides. All right, let me go press this. I'll be right back. And press it, but press your uh, turning hole because we're going to top stitch that close. So press that just like that. All right, so this is what you should have. So now we're going to top stitch. I haven't done anything down here except for press my turning hole. So I'm going to top stitch the top because that becomes our slip pocket. I'm using a Tech 45 grip. This really is a pretty beginner friendly pattern, um, especially if you don't do the grommets. If you do the grommets, um, and even a beginner can do those, it just takes a little more time. All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna grab one of our lining main panels and we're gonna measure over, let me get my other, 
the uh, what she says in the pattern from the left side. And we're gonna place our zipper or our card slot pocket up from the bottom, not much. Very interesting. Oh, I, I did it too much. I thought that looked weird. Yeah. Let me do this. There we go. There we go. Okay. So it should, it should be even. Oh, I, I can't get my measurement right over here. I'm like, what is the deal? There we go. So you should have the same amount on both sides, and I do now, now that I did the uh, measurement correctly. <laughs> And now we're gonna top we're gonna top stitch and sew in place the credit card slots on three edges. Don't don't sew the top, just these three edges. And if you want to pin it, go ahead. Mine's gonna stay in place. Okay, this last one. So that's what you should have. And I am, just for good measure, gonna test my card slots. Yeah, they're snug, which is actually very good. Yeah. Good, good, good. I like, that. I like them to be snug. I don't like them to be willy-nilly. All right, so this is done. So you have a slip pocket and then you have your card slots. How easy is that? Huh. All right, let's set that aside. And let's grab our slip pocket here. And we're gonna fold that right sides together and just do it like any other slip pocket. We're gonna, uh, Sew down this side and in and uh, leave a turning hole. And let's see, yeah. Just looking for the seam allowance. I'm going slow because this has no interfacing where I'm sewing. exact same thing on the other side. So down here, leave a turning hole. And I may run out of bobbin here because I, I used one that didn't have much thread in it. So we'll see how far I get. never know how long your poppins are going to last. And I've been sewing for years. 
<laughs> All right, clip your corners. And trim your seam allowance. And let's turn it and press it. You know what, I didn't do this, but there's not much there, but I'll do it. I'm not, I'm not uh, trimming where my turning hole, but I'm trimming the sides. Okay. Okay. All right. This is, uh, this fabric that I have is, um, I think it's from the Three Sisters Cranberry line. It's very nice fabric. It's cotton, you know, cotton quilting. Okay, I'm just getting my corners out good. Okay, I'll go press that and I'll be right back. All right, so I turned my um, slip pocket and I have my turning hole pressed and now we're just gonna top stitch across the top. And then we're gonna set this aside for just a few minutes. Oh, there goes my bobbin. It's a beautiful thing. I won the bobbin war. It's a wonderful thing. I can't say that I do that every time. All right, all right, that's hopefully this will, I think this will get us through the rest of it. Okay. All right, so let's set that aside. Now let's grab our other main lining piece. Oops. So our other main lining piece and our zipper facing. And we're gonna lay that. Uh, it's actually pretty long, so we're gonna lay it, let's see. How far down, I don't see. Oh, not far at all, okay. Interesting. Not far from the top, and you just want to make sure that you have about the same on each side. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, I'm going to pin that because none of my tape seems to work. I'm just going to use a few pins. I hate using pins, actually, but that's okay. I inevitably stick myself. I was in here and my, I heard my husband yelling. And I had the race, the Tampa Bay Rays game on in here and nothing, nothing was happening. So I went out there and they, they, they had uh, scored a home run. That's how far behind this TV is compared to what's out there. Weird. Okay, so now we are going to draw. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to follow the pattern. Uh, okay. Pins get in the way now, of course. That's okay. So we're gonna measure in what she tells you to in the pattern. And this is actually a short little zipper, which is interesting. Hmm. Okay. I'm 
trying to, uh, there we go. So you're just making a zipper box, just like any other zipper box. Okay. But she has very explicit directions on how you're doing it. This will be interesting because there's no interfacing on this. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go over and do it on my Bernina. I think. It'll never, this will, this will all be puckered if I don't. Okay, and then we're just going to sew on either side. Uh, no, we're not going to do the box. We're going to sew here and here, and that's it. I'm going to go do it on my Bernina. All right, that was much better with this uh, quilt cotton. This, uh, my industrial doesn't like it. It just doesn't. And that's okay. So now I just, uh, I sewed down each long side. And then I put a line down the middle. And now I'm just going to cut down the middle. And we're going to, I'm going to take it over to my iron. And just like any other facing, you do those little triangles and don't snip your stitches. I used white thread, so it's really hard to see it. <laughs> you know, some people do tell you not to sew the whole box. I don't do very many of these. Um, I just almost always use zipper overlays, but um, I know that some people tell you not to do the whole box and that you get a much better uh, rectangle if you don't. We'll see. I'm just kind of finger pressing it and then I'm gonna turn it and I'll go iron it. I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my uh, zipper facing. That's what you should have. It really came out pretty good. All right, so we're going to set that aside for a minute and take your zipper lining piece and we're going to attach our zipper with uh, the top edge, right side, both of them are right side up. So our zipper pocket right side up and our zipper's right side up with the zipper closing to the left and we're just going to baste that in place. Oh my. unlike any other zipper that you do. And then we're gonna pull that zipper up and attach, so here's what we just did. So that's what we just did, and we're gonna pull the bottom of this up and align it with the other raw edge of the zipper. And we're gonna base that in place. You just wanna make sure you're lining up your sides. I made my zipper, obviously, just a little longer than needed, and that's okay. I typically do that. All right, I'm just trying to get that, and just base that in place. As well. Now, you can if you want to. There's a couple things you can do, which I may just do, although this really doesn't need it. I was going to tell you to go iron this down, but it's staying for me. You could either um, put double-sided tape or you could iron it in place, either one. All right, so now we are going to put some double-sided tape on the top there, and I'm going to use 1 8 inch. I've kind of gotten in the habit of using one eighth inch because it, it tends to stay 
outside of my seam allowance and not gum up my needle. So that's my uh, story. Okay. Okay, so that's what you should have. Your zipper is closing to the left. And now we are gonna grab our uh, zipper lining piece and we are going to align that. Uh, I think she probably tells you to do it one at a time. Mm -hmm. She does. Oh boy. Okay, we're gonna do the top first. I'm just following the pattern. I would probably do it differently, but I think it's good when you're doing videos like that that you follow the pattern. Okay, and just get that on there evenly as you can. And I'm just making sure I have some on each side, which I do. All right, so now we're gonna uh, top stitch just down this one side. <laughs> the top side. And make sure your uh, zipper pocket is down. You're not closing at all. going to be a cute little bag. All right, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the tape off your bottom zipper. Keep your pull out of the way. And make sure that is even on your zipper as well. Okay. So, and then pull your pocket out of the way. And then we're gonna stitch along the bottom. I'm gonna do it this way. Make sure your, zip, your zipper pocket is up and out of the way. We just need to close our sides. So we're gonna, um, it's interesting. She doesn't have you sew the, the sides on the front, I don't think. Let me see what she does here. No. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. All right, we're gonna, with the pocket face up, we're gonna push the front back and we're going to close the side. And we're going to do that on both sides. I don't know. I mean, because we're going to trim it now, so I don't know why that would be, but that's okay. 
Okay, so now we're just gonna trim our zipper and that zipper facing, that excess. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, I didn't use my zipper scissors. I'm such a bad girl there. Okay, so there you go. Now you have a completed zipper pocket beautiful thing. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do it. I don't like that. I'm going to, I am going to finish the sides. I know it's a little obsessive of me. And I'm just going in the same hole I ended on, on uh, both the top and the bottom. So it's a seamless all the way around. I'll show you. So I just started here and went down to here. Same thing on this side. Okay. Oh dear. Okay. All right. I mean, we're so close to almost being uh, really done. Oh, so now we're gonna put our slip pocket right here. Very interesting. So we're just gonna center our slip pocket right under our zipper. And we're gonna make sure our um, zipper pocket is out of the way. And she gives you measurements for this in the pattern. And we're going to sew around the three sides. Mm -hmm. Mm If you wanted to divide that, this pocket it's a it's a pretty small pocket, so I, I I'm not going to, but you certainly could if you want to. All right, so there's a slip pocket there, and there's our zipper pocket. Hmm. Very very cute. All right, now our linings are both done. Hmm. Okay, I'll get my stuff ready, and I I will probably put on a label on one of the front sides. All right, so let's uh, put our outside together. So I have my outside top zipper and I have my little zipper tabs on each end and I'm just gonna sew those together at um, interesting, a pretty good seam allowance, okay. Not your typical quarter inch, so this is a little wider. And I am using the red vinyl for these. You know, sometimes using the vinyl on the ends makes them very thick. So we'll see. All right, then you're going to do just like anything else. You're going to fold it over and stitch across that. I probably didn't make mine. Um, 
I didn't make mine long enough. That's okay. I didn't make mine long enough, so I had to do a little more than an eighth of an inch top stitch. <laughs> Let's do the other side. You know, it's funny because uh, some people, when they do these, they want you to do uh, four zipper tabs. This one only called for two, which I like, actually. Okay. So there you have it. You don't, you don't see the underside anyway. So The other thing I, I went ahead and prepared, I had cut it before I decided what I was doing, is just the zipper. I mean, the... the um, wristlet handle tab so it's just a uh, I cut a three inch piece by one and a half and put a line down the middle and now I'm just going to fold that in and then I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna I won't be using this but I wanted to show you how to do it so here's a zipper I mean a wristlet tab and just stitch one eighth inch down each side get to that point, which is pretty soon, um, I'll show you where, where she suggests you put it. But you'd have a D-ring right in here. I should probably go get one just so you can see it. But All right, so now I did go ahead and put my logo. So if you have a logo, just put your logo on one of the front panels. And I just put mine two inches up, centered. I am going to go ahead and center these. Mark my centers. I'm not 100% sure that we'll need them, but I think I'll go ahead and do it just in case. All right. So now, um, depending on if you want your logo in the front or the back, it honestly, honestly it doesn't matter. So we're going to take one of our front panels and we're going to put our zipper tab down. And you can center this <clears throat> or you can, <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and center it real quick. Mark my center, I should say. Kind of hard to do with my zipper pulling away. So I'll just do it this way. Okay. 
Okay. So I've got my centers marked. And I'm gonna lay my, my panels right side up and my zipper is right side down with the zipper pull on the, I think it's how she has you put it towards the left. I see. Oh, okay. So, if you're putting your connector on, you would put it a one and a half inches down. So you would put it right here. Now keep in mind, you'd have a D-ring right here inside your connector. So that's what you would have. And she, what she says is she tries to put her connector, her zipper going towards the connector. That's what the directions say. So that's, that's why. And it would be the same principle because I'm using my, the grommet. It would be the same principle. I'd want my zipper going towards the grommet. And that way it closes towards your wristlet. So that's what that means. All right. So I'm going to center my zipper on there. And then we are going to base that in place. You know what, I didn't clip any excess here, so let me do that. On my zipper tab, I'm just clipping my excess off because I had just a little, not much. Okay. If she tells you about how much you should have on each end, which is a pretty generous um, amount on each end, and I like it. Okay, and now we're gonna base that in place. Now we're gonna take one of our <clears throat> one of our lining pockets and she says just pick one, whichever you guys prefer. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna take my zipper one with my slip pocket there and I'm gonna line that up. Oops, let me do my centers here. I've kind of gotten slack on marking my centers. It's very bad. I get so excited to start a, a little project that I forget to do all the prep work. You know, I'm sure you know the same thing, the same feeling. You know, I've been sewing for consistently for probably 20 years or more. I sewed before that, but that was just really hit and miss. And uh, I love sewing. I honestly can say, I love it. I, I had not experienced a funk. I know some people did, and my guess is it will come at some point, but I have not experienced a funk yet, which is good. All right, I'm clipping that right sides together with my front panel. I'll show you here in a second. So my uh, lining panel is face down. My uh, 
front main panel is face up. And we are gonna sew that at, um, I'm a, uh, you know, this is a free pattern. I should just tell you what the seam allowances are. Three-eighths of an inch. If you haven't if you haven't gotten to this point yet clip your uh facing off here trim that off i usually do it and i just didn't do it so. it's not the end of the world it's just a piece of cotton but it's getting in my way So this is the, the zipper facing, the inside lining, zipper facing. It's just an extra piece of fabric you don't need there. So I just cut that off. So now it's out of the way. Okay. So the next thing she had you do, which I really like, is she has you with your front panel to the right or the left it doesn't really matter you want to top stitch your zipper but you don't want to top stitch your lining in there and what this is going to do is it's going to help keep this area less bulky when we go to put it together so with the seam that you just created going towards the outside piece let's top stitch that zipper just on the outside fabric so you're not including the lining in this. I didn't used to do this but I have really in the last year started doing it it does make a difference So there's one side done. Let's put our other piece on and center that up. You could if you wanted to, and I would probably typically do this, is do the, the front panel and the lining at the same time. But because this is really a pretty beginner, friendly pattern. I'm trying to do it just like the pattern for those beginners. And you want to make sure that your sides are matching up. Mine is not. Even though sometimes when you mark centers, you don't get them just right. There we go. That's better. Okay, let's just base that in place. My zipper pull is gonna be in the way. So we're just doing a basting, one eighth inch. And now we're gonna add that other lining piece. Just make sure your credit cards are right side up. And we're gonna sew that at the 3 8 seam allowance.
This is not a new pattern, but I just discovered it, so that's why I'm doing it. There are thousands of patterns out there. Thousands. All right, I'm gonna stitch it from this side just so I can see my previous stitching. Not that it really matters, but. I'm just getting in there and holding my lining down because it was slipping up on me. I'm just gonna move my zipper pull out of the way. There we go. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna top stitch on that zipper, but we're only gonna do it through the main panel. So your main panel that we already top stitch is there and both of your lining pieces are pulled to the left. The seam that we just created is going towards this main panel. So there's our main panel with our two lining pieces attached. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. I'm way ahead of her, sorry. Huh? All right, so now we're gonna put these two, the fronts together, and clip those together, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the lining. But we're gonna leave a turning hole in the lining. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do all that clipping and then I'll be right back. Okay, before you, uh, I've got mine clipped, but while you're here, before you sew, she suggests that you trim these seams just a little, and that's all you need is just a little, it de on both sides. So it decreases the bulk. You don't wanna clip your uh, tab, but you wanna clip up to your tab. And now we're gonna, um, where's mine? Uh, turning hole. We're going to start and stop at our turning hole and we're going to do three eighths of an inch on the lining and a quarter inch on the exterior. So I'm going to do my standard uh, 90 degree and I'm leaving a big turning hole. She, ha she suggests you leave a big turning hole too. You know what? <clears throat> I 
forgot to open the zip off. Huh. Thought it seemed kind of bulky in there. Yeah, open your zipper. Now we're, we're tapering to that quarter inch. I mean, we're almost done. If you did put your um, tab in, whoops, hold on. If you did put your tab in, then uh, you're you're gonna be done. I still have to put my uh, grommets in. Okay, we're getting to the lining, so we're gonna taper to the the bigger seam allowance. All right, let's trim our seam allowance. You know what, and I'm gonna use my pinking shears here because this is cotton and it's gonna fray. And I'm not trimming my turning hole. I'll trim that after I finish it. Again, I am trimming just the corners here on the outside. And I'm gonna trim this a little here. Okay, here we go, let's turn it. Shouldn't be hard to turn. There's no Decaville or anything in these. Punch your corners out good. Use your corner tool if you need to. Could. This would be a cute bag to actually um, curve your corners a little bit. Not necessary, but. Okay, now let's close that up because our grommets are gonna go through all the layers. Somebody is doing, making some noise outside. And I don't know if you guys, <clears throat> I know I've talked about this a lot, but um, my tags, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first started, I actually made my own tags. <clears throat> uh, I just used a piece of cotton fabric and printed them on my printer. 
I don't think I even have any more. If I do, I'll, I'll go find them and show you. But my tags now I get from Hartwood and Hyde. She lives like uh, five miles from me. Jade. They're the best tags I've ever seen. And I've gotten quite a few tags in my career. They, uh, she really does quality, quality job. Her husband's working with her now, Chris. They, uh, <clears throat> there's a long, uh, if you're not a current client, there's a long wait. It may not be as bad as it used to be because uh, her husband, Chris, is working with her, but um, for repeat orders, it's not nearly as bad. But initially, it, when I when I got signed up, initially, it's been a year or more ago, uh, I had to wait three or four months. I don't even remember. It was a long wait. I was very anxious to get going. So that's uh, Jade at Hartwood and Hyde. I'm telling you, it's worth the wait. Absolutely worth the wait. So thank you, Jade, if you're listening. They, I mean, there's just no comparison to what they do out there. There may be, you know, there, I, there, there may be. I shouldn't say there isn't, but I haven't found it. Now, I haven't tried a bunch of different people either. You know, tags are not expensive, so I don't put them on everything. I mean, tags are expensive, so I don't put them on everything, I should say. Okay, what I did was I just finished my turning hole while I was talking, sorry. And now I'm just punching everything out. Oh my gosh, that fits in there beautifully. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So there on the inside, you have your zipper pocket, which is a good size zipper pocket. You have a little slip pocket. And on this other side, you have another slip pocket and your credit card slots. Wow. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go get everything over here <clears throat> to do the grommets, my cutter and all that so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'll be right back. All right, so I call this the green monster. This baby is uh, very heavy. And if I can carry it, but I prefer not to. So I had to go get my husband to help me. <laughs> all right, so I've got my cutter on here now. Um, when you're cutting, you need to have a, a piece like this underneath and so I am going to just get in here and I'm going to make sure that I'm centered on my mark and that I've got my lining piece there okay let's see if I got it I don't know if I did yep I did Beautiful. So I may have to, let me grab my little scissors. Okay, so this is what you have. So what'll happen is this will go in here through both layers and then I'll put the other end on just like that so that's what it'll look like and I'll press it with you but let me make my other hole because then I have to change my grommet and you need to be careful these little cutter dies are very sharp let me see, I'm having a hard time seeing it. There we go. Beautiful. 
And, you know, normally I would probably fuss with getting the, the pressure just right. So it cut it through completely, but I'm not gonna worry about it here. There you go. So there's my hole. So I have both holes now. Now I'm gonna change my cutting die to my pressing die. This is quite the process. So there's my little pieces in here and I'll get them out later, but Okay, so now you have a plate for the bottom. That's where that goes. And then you have, this is the pressing die. And this, these just screw in there. If you're thinking about getting one of these, Rowley has some just fantastic videos on how to use these. Okay, so I'm gonna put my grommet in. Get that in there real good. And then I'm putting the inside piece. So that's what it looks like on the inside. And that's what it looks like on the outside. And then I'm gonna press that. Get that under there just right. I may have to mess with the pressure here. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, that didn't get it, that's okay. Normally for these little ones, I can do it by myself. Yeah, I got it. So there's that one. And there it is on this side. Okay, let's do the other one. So here's the side for the outside. It doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter, but I think actually it does now that I say that. And then this is the flat piece. And that goes on the inside. <clears throat> And then I'm gonna lay that right there and get it under my die, whoops, and pull. Yep, I got it. This thing is a, it is definitely a beast. So there you have it. There's the hole. And that's what it looks like on the inside. It's a beautiful thing. So now, we'll put our gate ring through one side. Actually, I'll try and do them both at the same time. We'll see. Yep, there we go. So there's our gate ring. And then when I get, we'll go over and finish the uh, handle, the wristlet strap, and we'll be done. All right. All right, so there we go. A um, couple things. Unless you're gonna use a lot of grommets, I wouldn't invest in that grommet press. Um, I think the cam snaps, uh, has dye and it's much less, much more less expensive. But if you're gonna do large grommets, like I do uh, 18 millimeter, is that right? No, I do 12 millimeter, 12, number 12 grommets for draperies are about two inches like that. And I've even done the larger ones. So I have multiple dies because for every grommet size, you have to buy a separate die and press and it gets expensive. Now, I've been doing it for a long time. I charge quite a bit for draperies, so uh, it's worth it for me. Now, when I do the drapery presses, I have to have my husband help me. I'm a weakling. And we don't have that uh, grommet press bolted down anywhere. If it was bolted down somewhere, I wouldn't have to probably have him help me. But that's the way it is. All right, so let's do our 
wristlet strap. So this is a two inch piece. I'm just folding into the center on each side. And I'm gonna make it just like she has in the, I don't usually make my wristlet strap this way, but I'm gonna do it just like she has them. She has it. And this is a, ends up being a half inch, which is good, but I don't have any matte black half inch. I do have a quarter inch. I think this is a quarter inch. So it's gonna be a little bit big and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so I've got that pressed in there and now I'm gonna open these ends just like this and I'm actually gonna put another piece of double-sided tape here, just a little one. And I'm gonna sew the ends together. I like this method, I really actually do. You do need to put your uh, swivel clasp on before you do this though. Don't forget that part. <laughs> I almost did. That would have been very disappointing. I do like this method. I should do it more. So then I'm just folding these two together, pressing these two together, and I'm gonna sew those together. over here I've got to move or I'm gonna have a disaster okay now I'm gonna just press these down if I can get them goodness gracious oh you know what I can't do it because I that's all right I can I can you can do most things orb all right, so now I'm gonna just press that back in on itself and we will top stitch all the way along. Let me grab my other clips here. I, I honestly, I haven't done this method in a long time. And I like it. I do. I really do like it. I need to do it more. Because then, number one, there's no raw edges. So this is great for if you're doing a cotton. And it's not, it doesn't get real bulky where your swivel is connected. Okay. All right, so it's a hot mess. Um... Now I'm just gonna top stitch, and I think, where is my ends? Now I can't even find the end, that's hilarious. Let's see, here it is. I'm gonna start over here by my seam. And I'm gonna shorten my stitch length to about a two and a half, actually. And we're gonna top stitch down both sides. It's a little more tedious and time consuming to do this method, but I think it's well worth it actually. do real narrow seams like this, I do decrease my stitch line. 
it's not necessary, but I do it. And I'm just moving my swivel out of the way as I go. Same thing, go slow. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be done. over by the, the green monster. Now we're just going to do one final stitching. typically like to have my there is the seam there I don't know if you can see it right there it's hard to tell I'll put that down just a little bit and I'm gonna just make a seam across there so it doesn't come apart and I'm gonna come down just a little more I don't want to go over that and I'm gonna get as close to my swivel clasp as I can and just make a line of stitches back and forth. That's it. And now we'll just attach it. perfect length for, I mean, I have fairly small hands, so there is, now the other thing you could do, if you didn't, number one, didn't want to do a grommet, didn't have any gate rings, you could just attach it, the handle, let me do that, you could just attach it to the zipper pull, I don't know if it'll fit, yeah, it'll fit on my zipper pull, so that way you can just open it up get in it, close it back, grab it, 
and go on your way. But you see that it helps to have the wristlet strap with the closure end so that when you're holding it up like this, it doesn't have the chance to open when you're not paying attention. So either way, there's multiple ways you could do it. You could use the tab method, and the tab would be down here. So the tab would be here instead with your D-ring, or the grommet with the gate ring, or just attach it to your zipper pull. Uh, I'd, I'd make sure that number one, I was using a number five zipper and a pretty beefy zipper pull if I was gonna do that. But there you go. There is the Shazzy wristlet by Aura Rosa. I love it. I just love it. Really tons of room. Plenty of room for um, an iPhone, keys. I could put my purse pal in there, but you don't need to. You got plenty of zippers and you got credit cards. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.